You know how as you get better at art, you look back at your old paintings and you cringe your cringe off? Here's an old painting I did of Aphrodite that I found a couple weeks ago and I feel like she desperately needs a refresh. The pose is awkward, the lighting and colours are muddy, the textures are off and the anatomy is just weird. And it's just overall not a super good painting, at least as compared to where my skill is today. So in this video, we're going to walk through what is essentially a whole new painting, but I do want to talk to you guys about all the changes that I'm making to this painting and why I'm making them. Plus something I've wanted to work on a lot lately is photo manipulation and collaging stock images together and such in order to create some interesting compositions. So while we will be doing a lot of painting today, we'll also dive into a little bit of matte painting and such. If you enjoyed this video and learned something today, please remember to like and comment, subscribe to my channel for more art content every single week, and come say hello on Instagram and Discord, links are all down in the description. Alrighty, let's redo an old painting. Let's start by taking a look at the old painting. I thought it might be interesting to share with you a bit of the critique I had for this baby, because that way you might learn some skills when it comes to self-critique as well. So first and foremost, there is a lot going on. Like, yeah, we have some nice leading lines driving focus to her, but there is just a lot of texture, but no definition going on in the background. I do quite enjoy the muted, dusty rose to blue colour transition, maybe we'll keep that bit. With the character herself though, there is a lot I want to change. First, the pose is awkward, it is a weird head tilt, the hands are just not right, and while I quite enjoy the contraposto, it is just not doing anything for her. The face is pretty, but the eyes are mismatched, the temple to jaw area is way too broad, and it again feels too muddy. I don't mind the hair, though I'd like the texture to be a little nicer, but all oh, that outfit and jewellery is just really not it. <laughs> Plus, I'd like to include symbolism that actually pertains to Aphrodite, and maybe make the composition a little less structured like a scene, but rather more abstract. Hi, buddy. You okay? Okay. <laughs> so with that in mind, I started with a sketch on paper, which I imported into Critter. I immediately knew that instead of doing too much, giving her like a super complicated outfit or anything, I wanted the focus to be on her beauty this time around. So I opted to go for a bust portrait instead of a full body one. And get this, she's gonna have no outfit. Instead, we're gonna surround her with Aphrodite-related symbols. The first and most important, of course, is a rose. I definitely wanted it to look like she was emerging from the center of a light pink rose. Now, I could have painted it all by hand, but I did really want to experiment with matte painting in a non-structured way. Generally speaking, I've seen people work stock images into things like landscapes and backgrounds, but one artist that I've been heavily inspired by lately is Danielle Noel. I actually own two separate decks of oracle cards that she's done the art for, but she has this incredible knack for collaging together these absolutely stunning, ethereal compositions. And like, I really want to try it out. So I first gathered some important base images. All of these came from Unsplash and are free to use stock images. We are ethical in this house. And once I had the sketch down, I started working the background elements in. I usually do the character first, but I just know I'd get a little too caught up rendering her and then rush through the skill that I actually wanted to work on today. So yeah, we're gonna do the framing elements first instead. I thought the dove would be a cute little addition right on the front petal of that rose, kind of mess with the relative size a little bit. And I put a giant wave in the background. This didn't end up staying in the final piece, but hey, art can sometimes change completely with every new iteration. Oh, 
Alrighty, let's dive into the character. I started by placing in very rough and very saturated color zones in the skin. Stuck some blue, neon pink, and a bit of yellow all over her face and torso, as well as a warm undertone for her hair. I then went over the skin with a palish flesh tone and a gentle hand, softening all of the colors down, but not painting over them completely. We want them to kind of peek through that flesh tone, which will give us a bit of color depth that really makes the face look alive. And then it was time for a standard render process. Yes, her nose is crooked and mouth is off center. I did go in and fix that later. The bit that I truly enjoyed rendering was her neck and shoulder area. Don't ask me why, because I don't know why, but there was something so satisfying about rendering a pronounced set of collarbones and SCM muscles. Absolutely delightful. I definitely wanted this version of Aphrodite to have very dark hair because that would really contrast her skin and more importantly act as like a separating barrier between her pale skin and the pale elements of the frame and the background. Okay, this is where I started to reconsider the background. It was just too much texture and visual noise and if you remember that was like my least favourite part of the previous version of this painting. I went ahead and lightened it for now, lowering the value contrast, but it still wasn't screaming at me. But because I didn't know how to fix it, I decided to go around the rest of the painting instead, because shifting your attention can often bring you solutions. And bring solutions it did. Instead of doing one giant wave, I switched the background out for some flat, ripply water. Kind of like if you were looking at a shallow lake in bright sunlight, and while the blue alone was grand, I really did want to incorporate some of that dusty rose to blue gradient from the original painting, so I overlaid a pink copy of the background and then masked out just enough for it to create a nice gradient with the blue copy underneath. One aspect of Danielle Knowles' art that I really, really love is the pale overlays that add like cloudiness to the scene. It's such a cool effect and it just really, really adds a lot of visual depth. Like there's a layer of cloudy, hazy texture and then the main subject is kind of emerging from the depths behind it. I thought it'd be a cool textural analogue to the idea of her emerging from the depths of the rose. And then we have a couple of final touches here and there, just refining the edges that we want refined, blending out the edges we want smoother, as well as some levels and color balance adjustments to really bring the piece together. And here is the finished, updated Aphrodite painting. What do you think? So there we go. I love how she's turned out. Such an improvement. What do you think though? Do you like this new version or do you think I should have kept it closer to the original? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, of course, please do remember to give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more art content every single week. Also come say hello on social media. Links are down in the description below. If you like what I do and would like to support all the work I do, um, you can always check out my Patreon, link is up here. I put up all of my speed paints from start to finish and also other exclusive rewards such as a first look at all of my art, my custom brush kit for Photoshop and Critter, as well as a whole bunch of real-time painting tutorials that I did a while ago. It is all available for all of my patrons, the link is up here and thank you so much for checking it out. And that's about everything I have to say today, so thank you guys so, so much for hanging out with me. I really hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. If you're looking for a bunch of really good art advice that will change the way you think about painting forever, you might enjoy this video that I put out a couple weeks ago. I'll leave it here in the outro. It will change your life. So check that out, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye!